so the Zoom, thank you, computer. The Zoom is set up that so that the only person, only the person speaking will show up on the screen. Um, we will have stops, we'll have about three stops uh, throughout the presentation for question and answers and discussion. <coughs> if you have any questions, please put the questions in the chat. So that is the little um, button at the bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to say something when we're going through the question and answers, if you want to say it verbally, uh, please use the hand icon to let me know and I'll come to you. I may also come to you uh, if you are okay with it um, to expand upon a question you have asked or a point you have made. Uh, if you have any questions that are outside the land and water regional plan, uh, we do want to respond to those questions, but if the person uh, OIC staff member who is uh, the expert or is the relevant person is not on the call. Um, we will we will um, have to take your message or your question and get back to you later on. Uh, so Rachel Curry, who is the project manager for the program, uh, is has put some contact details in the chat box. If you have any questions or need help with the technology, uh, please text her on that number that she's provided. If you could just go to the uh, the next slide, please, Tom. Uh, before I step in, I'd just like to invite uh, Edward Allison to do a karakia. Hello, David. Thank you. Uh, warm greetings, everyone joining the Zui tonight. I'm just going to offer a prayer. Iti ariki, te kaihanga, te mataranga, o ngā me katoa. Ta tu mai ki rongi i a mātou i tēnei rā. Ia ki te ai ki a mōhi ai i a mātou, i ngā me e tō te kai te katoa. E te aki ana rātou, i mawana i roto te mate korona. Me o rātou i te tahi whenua i Europe, i a Ukraine, i te ao te pākanga i a whina tau toko ana rātou. Noho tono mai i Wanganui o tātou, i au pononga. Kurori ki te mātou ki te tama ki te waira o tapu. He pera noa i te tūmatanga. A pera noa i nāia nei, a pera a kei tono atu, amen. Thank you. Thanks, David. Kia ora, Edward. I would just ask you again if you could please put yourself on mute if you're not talking. Um, so with us today, we have um, Tim Vial from uh, Okaha and Maria Bartlett from Te Ao Marama. Uh, we also have, I'd also like to welcome Mana Whenua um, from Otako and Murahuku. Uh, in terms of the ORC team, um, we have myself, uh, Councillor Hope, who is the FMU councillor for this, um, for the Lower Kalutha Rohe. Um, and we have Tom DePelsmaker, who is just about to kick off um, after we've been through this slide um, and, and go through the presentation. So we are here today to discuss the Lower Kalutha Rohe. Um, the purpose is to identify the values and characteristics um, that you want to see out of uh, freshwater management in, in the Rohe, um, so that we can then come back to you uh, later on to discuss how we can deliver on those values. You'll see there is a map there up on the, the, um, up on the screen on the presentation. Now, this is the Lower Clutha. Um, the Lower Clutha, the boundary lines have been uh, confirmed in an earlier process. So these are the boundary lines. So we had a, um, if you are in this area or have values in this area, this is what we want to um, hear. This is the area we want to hear from you on. Um, and as, as I said earlier, um, we will be going, uh, stopping every now and then for uh, questions and answers. So if you can please put any questions through the chat box, I will uh, accumulate, uh, respond to those um, as we go through. Tom, would you like to take over? Thank you, David. Um, thank you, Councillor Hope. Thank you, Edward. Kira, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Tom the Pulsemaker. I'm the team leader, uh, Freshwater and Land. And um, I'm part of the team. Um, I was going to say the policy team, but it's actually a team that spans different disciplines across council that is working on um, the development of the new land and um, land and water regional plan 
And so in this part of the um, presentation, I really want to explain a few uh, terms, a few concepts um, that hopefully give you a better understanding of why we're here tonight. Um, and that also hopefully enable you to um, better participate in our consultation process. So I'll be talking a little bit about what is a land and water regional plan. Um, why do we need one? And why do we need one now? And, and how do we go about developing one? Um, also, we'll talk a little bit about values and characteristics. Um, we want to know what's important to you. So we want to know what are the important values for you and what are their characteristics. But we just want to make sure that we've got a shared understanding of what a value is and what a characteristic mean so that we're not talking cross purposes and so we get the most out of this consultation. I'll also talk a little bit about the process um, and um, I'll tell you how you can participate and um, if there would be any appetite for that I am more than happy to take you through um, our online tools so the online survey and um, also the um, interactive map. I'm just trying to bring up the right slide. So what is a land and water regional plan? Um, a lot of you are based in the Clutha District. Um, Clutha District Council has a plan, ORC has plans as well. Um, there's often a little bit of confusion around what does a, a district plan do and what does a regional plan or what do regional plans do? And they have quite a different focus. Um, district plans, they're mainly focused on managing urban development. And so they're very much concerned about um, the urban environment. So they tell you where you can build, um, what standards you need to meet when you're building. They also tell you where you can subdivide. Like I said, regional plans have a different focus and they're much more focused on the natural environment. And uh, ORC has a few regional plans. We've got an air plan, a plan that tries to look after the air quality. So it will manage discharges from um, our uh, wood burners or from our industrial activities to the air, make sure that we don't degrade air quality. We've got a coast plan that looks after the health of the coastal environment as well. And now at this point in time, we're actually developing a land and water regional plan. And uh, what that plan tries to do is it tries to manage activities such as the taking of water, uh, such as the damming of water, discharges to water. Um, so activities that can result in uh, degradation of water and associated ecosystems or other values that might be supported by that water. Um, in the plan, we've got provisions and sometimes we refer to those provisions as objectives and policies. Other times we talk about rules and limits. I thought it would be useful to just kind of explain what we actually mean with those. Um, the plan has an objective and an objective is basically an outcome. It's a statement that says what we wanna achieve where and by when uh, within a certain area. So an objective might be a statement in the plan that says we want to achieve uh, good water quality across all water bodies in the lower Clutha Rohe by a certain date. How we're going to get there, that is actually articulated in the policies. And one of the ways that we can get there is through rules. And the rules very much tell you what activities you can do, which activities are permitted, provided you meet certain conditions, or which activities you can't do at all, activities that are uh, prohibited. And then it also tells you which activities you can do, provided that you have a resource consent. So that's basically what a, a land and water regional plan is and what it does. Why do we need one? Um, we're developing one uh, and it is scheduled to be notified by the end of next year, which is 2023. But we actually have one at the moment. Um, we've got a water plan. The problem with the current water plan is that it's pretty old. 
It was notified in 1998, so that means that it's nearly 25 years old. Um, and it's a little bit out of date. Um, it was very much a product of its time and it achieved some good things. Um, the plan put a stop or, or uh, the plan was quite explicit that it wanted to um, put a stop on environmental degradation of freshwater. But at the same time, it is also very much built around uh, the protection of existing use rights and around maximizing the use of natural resources. Uh, like I said, it was a product of its time and it was probably meeting the expectations at the time, but the expecta expectations of the community and of uh, central government have changed in recent decades. Um, today, we're in a situation where avoiding further degradation might not be enough anymore. And people, what you'll see is people actually expect that where you have water quality degradation, that you kind of um, try to regain what has been lost. So where a water body, a river or a stream or a lake is degraded, the expectation is that you bring it back over time to a healthy state. So the plan, the current plan is kind of um, failing to meet that expectation. The issues that we're dealing with in Otago and the challenges have also changed a little bit. Um, for example, when the plan was notified, climate change kind of, people started talking about climate change, but it wasn't as, make, as big as a deal as it is now. Um, today, um, it is very much at the uh, uh, forefront uh, of everybody's uh, mind. We've got different issues as well. We've seen um, maybe not as relevant in um, the lower Clutha Rohe area, but we've seen urban development in places or uh, rapid urban growth in places where we didn't think it would occur. Um, and throughout the region, we've actually seen um, agricultural intensification and expansion also in places and, and to some degree to a scale that we hadn't anticipated. So because of those new issues and challenges and because of the changing expectations, uh, we've seen in recent years, uh, a lot of new legislation come through. Um, the national policy statement for freshwater is uh, one of the key pieces. We also have a new environmental standards for freshwater as well. The problem is that the current plan actually doesn't give effect to the new NPS and is um, inconsistent with um, the NES standards. One of the key fundamental concepts um, that has come true through the new legislation is the concept of Tamana or Tawai. And you might have heard people talk about it before, and some of you will be very familiar with it, but I thought for the benefit of everybody, I might just quickly uh, run you through that concept. It's a new concept that is fundamental to the way in which a fresh water needs to be managed in today and into the future. Um, it is embedded in the NPSFM, um, but it is the NPSFM requires regional councils to make sure that that concept is also um, carried through in all the new plans. And in fact, in all the decision-making that happens under those plans, it's the responsibility of central government, regional councils, but the NPSFM goes a little bit further and it actually says that it's a responsibility and a duty for all New Zealanders. So that is pretty fundamental to the NPSFM and it will be fundamental to the new plan as well. The way that the NPS has tried to um, kind of put this concept into a, a, a legislative structure is by um, coming up with a hierarchy and it requires us to apply that hierarchy in the new plan. And the hierarchy looks a little bit like um, it is set out on the slide. So the first priority, uh, the number one thing that we've got to look after all the time is the health and well-being of water bodies and freshwater ecosystems. That's key. That's the bottom line. It's only when we achieve that, 
then we can that we can start thinking about a second priority and addressing that. And the second priority is looking after the health needs of people. Uh, what we mean with that is making sure that they've got drinking water, making sure that it's safe, and also making sure that people have um, water for hygiene purposes. And then once you've met the second priority, at that point, we can start thinking about using water for other purposes, our economic or cultural or social well-being. So that is um, a pretty fundamental concept um, right now. I was wondering, is it, at this point might be good to stop? Are there any questions? Uh, before we do, um, Tom, I'd just uh, like to invite uh, Mana Finner to give the perspective, um, Edward to give the Mana Finner perspective. Sorry, I should have done this right at the outset. Uh, Edward, would you like you to provide that Mana Finner perspective? Yes, thank you, David. Uh, greetings, everyone, again. Uh, Ngai Tahu have been working in partnership with the Regional Council, and we bring our values and association to water to be factored into the um, land and water regional plan. And for us, water is a central element in the Kaitahu creation traditions, water being the foundation of all life, the source of all life. Uh, it has a whakapapa, therefore goes right back to the beginnings of time. And everyone will know about Rangi and Papa, you know, Sky Father and Earth Mother. But in our traditions, they had about 80 children and they all had different roles in terms of developing, creating mountains, rivers, forests, seas, the fish, bird, and animal life. So it gives you a sense of the spiritual connection we have with water, hence this term mana o te wai. That's where that mana comes from, and the modi or the source of life comes from that very beginning, that very spark that happened at the time of creation. Of course, over time, once our people arrived, uh, we utilize the water both to travel on, daily ablutions, but also, of course, very much a hunter and gatherer activity to terms of the fish life, um, the, the length and the breadth of the mato. So the mato or the klutha, um, as you might know it, a uh, very important um, waterway in our traditions, our customs. Uh, our people traveled it, traversed it, uh, walked up inland and they traveled back by Mokahi, bringing their goods back out. So it's very much utilized practically by our people as well. Uh, so out of all of that arises a, a guardianship role, you might call it, kaitiaki tanga really. And, and our, our role nowadays very much so is exercising that, that duty we have as inheritors of that history, that connection, um, to, to speak for the river and uh, with the river and ex express its interconnectedness from the tops of the mountain to the, the, the bottom of the oceans, really, because the, the flow of water affects the land all the way down and, of course, affects the oceans. So it's, a, it's re very important for us in terms of all the things we may take from the water there's a, there's a reciprocal duty to exercise care and kaitiakitanga. Uh, so, so that's our function, and that's what we um, uh, bring to this uh, process. In very much aligned with that first, second, and third priority, the river comes first. If we don't look after that, then our needs become a very poor second, and there's, there's no ability to do the third. So they're, they're key elements. Uh, and we're also assessing water quality. We're going and having people go and um, assess through this process, cultural health um, parameters to feed into this process. Got it. Thanks, David. Kia ora, Edward. And uh, apologies once again, I should have asked for the money uh, right at the outset. Uh, Tom, what we might do is just get uh, two sl more slides along and then we'll break for some questions. Sounds good. Um, moving on to the next slide.
So how are we gonna develop this new land and water regional plan? Well, uh, first of all, by partnering with IWI, um, they are there uh, together with us to develop the plan, basically write it. Um, we're also gonna be building on past consultation. Uh, we've done quite a bit of consultation in the past. Uh, David, you mentioned right at the outset, um, the consultation around um, the RPS and the boundaries. Uh, we got some feedback through that. We got some feedback through earlier consultation on various other uh, projects as well. So we'll be building on that. We're not throwing that out. Um, we'll also be collating new and we'll be using existing technical information. And what I mean with that is information around hydrology, ecology, uh, economics, and from uh, uh, EWI side, we will also be provided with technical information around cultural values and uh, flow studies. And then we'll be engaging with communities like yourself and, and Fano to get a better understanding of what are the key values and, and, and how do you want uh, how, how do you want the environment to look like in the future? So that's at a very high level, how we're gonna do this, but you might be wondering like, what does the process look like and what are the different process steps and at what point does it start? Um, the development of the, the land and water plan actually started three years ago uh, when we um, split up the region into FMUs, fresh water management units, or sub FMUs, which we call ROHE. Um, after we did that in, in 2019, we went to the communities to work on a fresh water vision and also to discuss the boundaries. I will bring up the fresh water vision later on in a few slides because that's actually an important starting point for the discussion today. Um, fresh water vision, uh, it is very high level. Uh, it gives a summary of where uh, the community uh, wants to be within a certain time frame, But like I said, it's a summary, it's high level and it's incomplete. So uh, it does not cover all the values or it talks about categories of values. So we, what we actually wanna do now is refine that a little bit and kind of build that uh, comprehensive picture uh, of all the values. Um, so values, what we call values are actually things that are important to you, things that matter to you. And when we talk about the word, uh, when we use the word characteristics, what we mean with that is um, what aspects of that value make them important. Um, for example, swimming, um, we'll work through that, ex that example later on, but there might be certain aspects around uh, swimming as a value that actually make that a, a valuable experience. So once we've got feedback from you on what the values are and the characteristics, we build an outcome, an outcome of where we think the value should be in the future. Outcomes are objectives and they're narratives. And the good thing about narratives is that they're easy to understand. They're a written statement, basically, but the downside of an outcome of an objective is often that they are very hard to measure. And that has been a problem um, with uh, older generation plans. Um, they talk about things such as good water quality and healthy ecosystems, but it's often a continuum and it's really hard to determine where the cutoff point is. So going forward, what, we've, what we have to do is translate that narrative, that objective or that outcome into something that is measurable. We call it a target attribute state, but essentially what we're doing is we find an indicator for that value and we try to define a threshold at which we wanna keep that indicator to make sure that we achieve those target attribute states. We will then develop rules and limits which will go in the plan. So today we are very much focused on the values and the characteristics. Um, when we come back to you in uh, the second half of this year, 
we will actually um, be talking again about outcomes, target attribute states, and the rules or the actions that we think are appropriate to achieve those outcomes and those attribute states. Thanks, Tom. We might just stop for a few questions there. Um, first, uh, thanks, Craig and Logan. I've seen some through. Firstly, I'll, I'll just ask, I recognize a lot of these faces as being involved in Plan Change 6A. Um, two important differences to Plan Change 6A and this Land and Water Regional Plan, as I understand it, is A, this is going to be a land and water regional plan, uh, and B, there will be a little bit more of a focus on urban uh, land uses. Can you just expand upon that, please? Yep. Um, I'll start with the letter one. Um, when 6A was um, conceived, that was about, I think, in, in 2014, um, there was going to be a, a companion piece to it. 6A was very much focused on managing rural diffuse discharges. Um, at the time, we didn't have much in the plan to manage those, but also our, um, our uh, provisions for managing urban discharges and point source discharges were at that time already uh, in need of an overhaul. Unfortunately, that companion piece plan change hasn't happened. So it is something uh, that we need to address in this plan. Um, through the consultation as well, we have seen um, a lot of um, interest um, or concern actually around the effects of urban development uh, on waterways. So it's very much something that we need to address in this plan. 6A was also effects-based. Um, it was a, as a principle, it is, um, it is good, but it's very hard to put in practice. Uh, it meant that we were waiting for effects to occur in, um, in waterways before a, a rule kicks in or before action can be taken. That is um, a little bit reactive at times. So, you, you know, the damage might have occurred before we're aware of it. Um, to address this issue, uh, we want to be a little bit more proactive and start looking at certain practices on the land as well. Um, the other thing is we already have a land plan or um, a partial land plan, uh, which is referred to as the waste plan. It's actually even older than the water plan. So also in need of a review, um, the idea is to wrap the new waste plan up into the land and water regional plan. So that will be dealing with the discharge of, of, of uh, solid waste to land as well. Kia ora, Tom. Uh, so I've got another couple of questions coming through on the chat. Uh, firstly, Logan, uh, actually, no, Craig Gordon has asked surface on the flood banks would around the Belclutha, uh, around Belclutha would be a great recreational area. What barriers would there be, um, I guess, in the land and water regional plan to developing um, surface areas around the flood banks to allow for walking, recreation, uh, cycling, etc.? I'll, I'll try to answer that one. Um, it is very much a, a, a piece that, um, or uh, an action that needs to be, something that needs to be achieved through um, both regional councils and district councils. We both have a role to play there. Um, regional councils can, um, to some degree, manage um, activities, in the riparian margins, um, establishment of structures there, but it also has to do probably with, with subdivision as well, uh, making sure that um, yeah, public a reserve area uh, isn't lost through subdivision or the Queen's chain isn't lost through subdivision. So um, yeah, it requires a bit of an integrated approach from both uh, 
regional councils and, and district councils. And cool, working with landholders as well, probably. Thanks, Tom. Um, so just in terms of the, um, Logan has asked some questions around uh, what water quality challenges we see uh, for catchments in the lower Clutha. And I just, um, if you wouldn't mind asking that, then I'll just chip in in terms of that catchment stories. Sorry, David. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. So, Logan, oh. um, as part of the economics um, uh, project, we are developing a um, what is called a catchment stories project, where we're going to go some, to some of these catchments, just ask the, the questions around what you're doing on the ground, what is working, what is not working. Uh, so I'll flick you some information around that, Logan. Um, but it is a, a case of um, trying un to understand What's, what is happening on the ground and, and what is working uh, from uh, an on the ground angle. I think I'll pass to Tom now around in terms of how the Land and Water Regional Plan might respond to or might drive some of those challenges or respond to some of those challenges in the catchments. Yep, so um, in, in, in terms of the actions um, themselves, um, they'll be in, in part, um, they will be informed by the outcomes that the community wants to see. So um, depending on the, uh, the outcomes that we want to achieve, um, we, we might have to combine certain measures to manage water quality. So it is something that we will consult on in the next uh, consultation round. Thanks, Tom. And I think a couple of questions potentially for um, Rachel. Um, we've got questions from John. 100% uh, of all water in the Clutha district being safe to swim in 100% of the year. Is this not measurable? And also a bit of an understanding around where we are monitoring the water. And I think this might be one of the conversations we need to take offline to have a bit more detail. So I can I can talk about the um, KPI of 100% of all water to be safe to swim in. That is a um, that's a great target to have, and it it is measurable. But the um, the problem with measuring swimmable water quality is that it's you're monitoring a bacteria, which takes quite a long time to incubate. So um, we only monitor it fairly um, at monthly intervals at the moment. When the technology comes in, um, we all aspire to putting in you know continuous meters and rivers and knowing real time what, what the river is saying to us in terms of nutrients or in terms of bacteria. But at the moment, we are fairly limited. But as an aspirational goal, 100% of all water to be swimmable is, uh, is great. Whether it's achievable or not is a different matter. Um, and was there another question? Uh, just no, in terms of monitoring, oh, the monitoring. Yeah, where, where are we sampling? Well, at the moment in the lower Clutha, we do quite a lot of sampling in the Pomahaka catchment. Um, so, and particularly the tributaries. Um, I've got a little list in front of me. So we in the Waiwera, for example, a couple of sites, Waitahuna, the Wairuna, a couple of sites in the Waipahi, Tuapeka, Pomahaka, Lobos Creek, Herrick Burn, Crookston Burn, Clutha at Balclutha, and Black Blue Burn. So it's a fairly, um, there's a significant number of sites there, and they're all monitored once a month. Thanks, Rachel. And Camille's just made the point that the Clutha flow is too much, uh, too heavy for uh, to safely swim in the majority of the time. Lloyd, I see you've, and that's the sort of feedback we want um, through the survey process as well. Lloyd, I see you've got a couple of questions. You've also got your hand up. Do you want to uh, discuss that? Uh, do you want to ask those questions all together? If you just uh, unmute yourself and. Oh, yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yep. Yeah, um, thank, thank you. Um, there's, there's two or three things probably I've sort of written down so far. <clears throat> the first, 
um, around, around the water quality world, what Rachel was just talking about, at the end of the day, we're talking about state of environment sites, which are, measured, which are measured one sample in one minute on one day of one month, and then averaged and, and reconfigurized to get some sort of a number. It's not really water quality uh, data measurement that's of major use. Um, also, I'll put there my last comment there is the regional policy statement, which this all hangs below, refers to improvements of water quality data, but it's based off data from two state of environment testing in 2017, which in itself is based off the previous five years water quality data um, samples taken in the area. So I believe this is because of the five year cycles, but I would think one of my big concerns is that we actually need to have up to date science so we know where we're at now. Um, I put my hand up before regarding the water quality one, the 100 percent swimmable 100% of the time. That is um, a, a you know a stretch target, but you need we need to um, need to be, re be really careful on what you say when you're setting the visions because it gets taken literally. Because if you're wanting to be swimming in the sea pole up the top of the gully, that's what 100% of the water 100% of the time is. It's got to be. But nobody wants to go and swim in the little ditch that's only got water up to halfway up to your knee, okay? Let alone, so we need to, so we need to be, when, when we, we got to be really careful when we set divisions and values as to where we come from, because I've got to be realistic because at the end of the day, um, even though Taman or Tawai puts the water first, we still have to have communities and we still have to have, um, the people actually have to live because without, Without people, the water is not a lot of use. Um, now, there's a there's a few things I'll, I can come in all the time off because I know when we start talking about these, I'll have a few ideas as well. But you know, we just need. Well, I do think we do. You, we have to be sort of like we, but when you're putting, because the way we think of our value may not be the way that the people are interpreting the value that are in that are writing the policy. Because to take it to extremes, we've got to keep it keep it you know, pretty much above the level. And that, my other big concern is because I'm only here because I've had two cancellations um, this evening. One being a close brush with COVID that's sent me home. Another one uh, being, um, being um, um, well, I've actually got two other appointments apart from that as well. But so from what I can understand in this part of the vision setting, I was wanting to know what other consultation we're gonna be hold around this specific part of the consultation. Because I'd hate to think it's just being all done on one Zoom and the ability to sign and on to fill in an online um, form. Some feedback on that would be good. Yeah, just Lloyd, we are going to go through the consultation steps from here. Um, what I might do is just so we don't have everyone jumping in uh, expecting to speak, what I might do is just, uh, Hamish, I know your hand's up. What we might do is have a bit of a Q&A once we get through some of the steps, because some of these questions will be asked or answered as we go through the presentation. Um, Elsa, I see um, your question as well. Um, hopefully we cover that off as we start discussing the values and the processes. So uh, Tom, if you wouldn't mind just kicking on, and I do do note those questions. If you could put them in the, uh, in the chat box, Hamish, it might make it a bit easier for me to just pull them together. Continue. Thanks, Tom. Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I, I've got so many screens open. I don't have a, a view on, on what is coming through the chat box. Hopefully, I can uh, address them uh, through the presentation. If not, just, yeah, feel free to raise them again. Um, I'm just going to move on to uh, the next slide. I mentioned before about the RPS vision being the starting point, acknowledging that it's high level and it, that it needs refinement through this process. But I thought it would be worthwhile to just kind of um, as a refresher for those people that have um, participated in the consultation on that. And as an introduction for those people who are new to this vision, I thought I'd just summarize it on this slide. Um, so I, what it says, it's a summary, but what it says is basically recognizing that the lower Clutha Rohe is uh, only part of a, of a connected system, the Clutha Mada Ao, 
um, a point that was um, made by, by Edward previously, and also recognizing that the water that comes into that system is actually pure at the start. Um, the relationship of Kaitahu with the Rohe and um, the entire Klutha uh, Mata'a FMU is important as well. And then the other important value is, um, or, or thing that we want to achieve is uh, restoring or sustaining the natural form and function of the Klutha Mata'a and the different tributaries and other water bodies within um, this area. Easy migration of indigenous species is important as well. The Klutha hydroelectricity generation scheme is, uh, has national significance and it is actually um, a, an important component of uh, our national response to climate change as well. So those points are actually um, aspects of the vision that are also present in the vision for other Rohe in the Klutha Mata'au FMU. Um, the bottom two points are specific uh, for this Rohe. So uh, point of attention is that we want to make sure that the connections between the water bodies in the lower Klutha with the coast are preserved and restored where degraded. Uh, also putting an emphasis on the need for sustainable land management uh, practices, reducing contaminant discharges and providing for safe human contact. And we all want to achieve that according to the vision by 2045. So that's the vision. Um, I'll talk a little bit more now about values. Um, the NPSFM uh, is quite specific in terms of which values we need to think about as communities. And uh, I've, on this slide, you'll see three columns with values. And the first column refers to compulsory values. And those are values that we need to achieve or that we need to look after in every single FMU or Rohe. So um, they're non-negotiables, so to speak. Um, ecosystem health is one, and it's got um, the NPSFM uh, kind of defined it through um, five components. So ecosystem health, um, has to do with water quality, it has to do with water quantity, habitat, aquatic life, and ecological processes. So that's the first compulsory value. Second one is human context, which relates to swimming. The third one is threatened species, and the fourth one is Mahika Kai. Then the NPSFM sets out a number of values that we have to consult on as well. And we need to establish through this consultation as to whether they're relevant to this Rohe or not. Those ones are natural character, fishing, um, various uses of water, which include hydro, stock water, um, drinking water, or water use for domestic purposes, Waitapu, and Toranga Waka. So we need to kind of, through this process, determine which ones are relevant to the lower Klutha. And then the process also allows us to identify any other values that are not listed as a compulsory value or another value um, in the NPSFM. So one of them might just simply be walking or camping along um, the riverside. So through the survey that is online, we actually make inquiries about all of these uh, what we have done is um, try to use plain English. Some of these terms are quite um, technical. Uh, for example, aquatic life. We're not asking you what do you think about aquatic life, but we refer to it as plants or animals that live in or near water. So there's a bit of clarity around what it means. Um, also, we uh, have focused on uh, values um, that are relevant to the wider community. So with regards to um, values, iwi values, we will liaise with our runaka to get input on those values. I said before I was gonna try to take you through an example. 
So, uh, and I'm, I'm very much uh, mindful um, of the, uh, what Lloyd just said about making sure that um, we are realistic. Um, but I thought like, if we work around the value swimming, it is something that a lot of people can uh, relate to. So if we're starting from the, uh, the vision, the vision in its last bullet point referred to safe human contact. For a lot of people, safe human contact will mean that uh, we will be able to swim in rivers. So we'll ask them whether that is a relevant value. And then we'll ask them what makes a good swimming experience? What is important? Uh, what are important characteristics that we need to look after in order that you'll be able to swim? Um, is it a clean riverbed? Is it that there's sufficient water depth? or sufficient flow or current? Is it uh, relevant that uh, there is a low risk of getting sick? Or is it a combination of all of those and a few others? So that's what we'll be asking when we refer to the term characteristic. Um, once we have that information from you, we'll develop an outcome. And an outcome could look uh, such as the statement um, below. Uh, under the second column. So an outcome could be water bodies are clean and have sufficient flow for safe swimming all year round. To make sure that it's measurable, we link it to an attribute, in this case, E. coli, and we set a target attribute state uh, for E. coli. And then we uh, can come up with a number of rules uh, that set controls on activities that have an impact on E. coli levels um, in the water. So that could be controls on, on uh, discharges of stormwater or wastewater, or it could be fencing rules. Acknowledging again that uh, a lot of fencing rules have already been in play, put in place through um, the NES. But that's a bit of an example of how this whole process works. Um, and like I said before, values is what we're consulting on now. The next stages, outcomes, attributes, rules, and limits we'll be consulting on in the next phases. And um, we'll come up with some options around Tom, what we might What we might do okay. now is just park for a few questions, uh, yep. if you don't mind. Um, so Elsa's has asked a question around how the profile of the Rohe combines with the understanding and values and applying the outcomes, particularly given to Mano Te Wai. So uh, I'll, I might ask you, Elsa, would you be able to expand upon that um, question, please? I'm assuming you're talking about the specifics of the, the topographical characteristics, the water values, et cetera, culture values. Yeah, I am. And um, that just followed through with um, consideration of attributes too, that are probably beyond enough as well to fully um, express the values of that area. But yeah, I guess what I'm trying to understand is the um, personalization of this role here uh, opposed to how others are gonna be managed and how um, the uniqueness or the interaction of this one um, might have a different narrative. I guess, yeah, I'm just trying to consider how this is going to be different to others. Hmm. I'll have a crack at that. Um, um, yeah, it's a difficult balancing act. Um, like I said before, it is part of a, 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 a wider system and you don't want to lose that connection. So uh, some of the ma management measures that we'll be putting in place for this Rohe will be common throughout the entire FMU, the Clutham FMU, or even across the entire um, um, region. Um, but the climate uh, and the issues and the land uses are quite different. Um, from land uses that you may find higher up the catchment in the upper Clutha region, or they might actually be the same, but have different impacts. Um, so and I think that's where um, we put an additional layer 
underneath those region-wide provisions to kind of um, make sure that those responses at a Rohi level still achieve the outcomes. Does, and that you're not running the risk of uh, overshooting or undershooting your target. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I, I guess I'm semi kind of, I guess, looking for something aspirational at this stage, appreciating we're going into the visioning side of things opposed to, you know, the practicalities of something you consider for a 10 year process and consider for a 200 year process. Um, yeah, I, I just, for people who, this water body is important to a lot of people in this chat and um, it's more important than any other rohi because it's obviously significant to them. So I, I guess it's just that personalization that I'm starting to understand and wanting to understand how this could be different um, or unique. Um, yeah, uh, because there's lots of quirks, small press, uh, big river, small population, all those little things I was trying to understand. The fact that um, it does have small populations, how you're going to consider that and how you're going to manage the area. Yeah. It might so, be so. things that aren't able to be answered now, but I guess I just yeah. wanted to articulate that. Also, yep. you, I think you have um, our email addresses, so if you uh, wouldn't mind just flicking those questions through, it, it probably is a bit of a detailed discussion at this point, so we can get back to it. I can't remember moment. them now, David, I've said them. I think I've got yours, so I'll email no. you. <laughs> um, so, uh, sorry, go Tom. Oh, no, no, it's, um, it's a very good question. Um, it's probably an answer that we've got to think through a little bit. Um, it's not a, you don't deal with it in a, in a, through a one-liner. Um, so I might, we might come back to you on that. I just want to pick up on something um, that you said about this being a visioning process. And I think it's, we need to be clear that it, this is not about setting the vision. Um, the vision is there, although it's a proposed vision, it is actually in the RPS, um, which is tracking at a different speed. It is at the point where the RPS is notified. And, and so we cannot really change the vision through this process. We've got to work with it and we've got to achieve um, the vision in the land and water plan. It's, it's about refining and yeah, providing Yeah, sorry, a little... Tom, I didn't mean to imply that it was no. a new vision, but I, I, what I, and I completely, I think I'm in agreement with you that it, I consider it's the think big stage where, where you're yeah. thinking, you're taking that visioning and starting to see how it applies to the characteristics and what's missing and how even as a rohi, we articulate things that may be different to other areas, but that we've got our own language and our own understanding. Yeah, yeah, so sorry, I didn't mean to mean vision. No, 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 thank you. So uh, it segues quite nicely into a question from Ollie. Uh, so two, 2045 seems a short time frame given land use change to date. Why 2045? And uh, can we actually see improvements in water quality within 23 years? Um, the time frame as well was set through the RPS vision visioning process, which I wasn't really involved in. Um, the way the, the policy team is structured, we've got like little teams. Um, one is working on the RPS, one is working on urban development, and, and the team that I'm part of is working on the land and water plan. So it's very much something that has been handed over to us. Um, from a personal experience, um, I come from Europe, um, Western Europe, and it's uh, probably not a very good reputation in terms of pollution. Um, when I was a kid, I could not, the, probably wasn't, I've come from Belgium. There wasn't a single um, river in my part of the country where you would swim. And um, I'm 45 now. Um, that was the case when I was in my twenties and now things have changed dramatically in, in, the, in a good sense um, to a point where um, local authorities are actually um, prohibiting, prohibiting swimming in rivers because 
all the swimming pools are lo losing money right now. But what I'm trying to say is 25 years seems like a lot, a long time, but you can achieve quite a lot, actually. Thanks, Tom. Uh, and Bridget's got a, a question here, which I think will be partially answered through the next point. Bridget, if it isn't, um, please let me know. Just around uh, what part of the consultation, there will be discussions around how the tensions um, between values will be resolved. Uh, Bridget, we are just, uh, we are shortly go through uh, the steps following this. Um, that is point two, uh, but Tom will expand upon that shortly. Uh, Rebecca's yep. asked a question um, around uh, the Rohe, uh, Rohe values here are very focused on freshwater. Can you comment on the land elements and how that will be incorporated, incorporated into the land and water easement plan? Yeah, the values um, at the moment are very much focused on the outcomes for freshwater. Um, we, like I said before, uh, we want to manage aspects of land use that have uh, an impact on freshwater and soil health. Um, the uh, RPS gives a scope to go a little bit beyond that and um, manage land use for different um, purposes as well, like uh, terrestrial biodiversity. So we've got the scope to do that, but it is a conversation that we're currently having as well with our governance as to see how far we should go in that space. Um, noting that um, we've got district plans as well um, that are active in that space. We wanna avoid overlap or duplication or potential inconsistency as well. So um, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of, uh, there can be a little bit of movement as to how far we're going in terms of the land management aspect. Thanks, Tom. And just a question from uh, Hamish. Will the new plan utilize a greater degree permitted activities rules with clear guidelines and standards so that people will have a clearer understanding of what they can and can't do? Um, good point. Um, permitted activities. Um, there's a lot of appetite to use permitted activities but we also need to be mindful of the downsides of that. Uh, and one particular downside is the fact that we don't know really what's happening if an activity is permitted. Um, just to give you an example, uh, freshwater accounting, uh, we are required to kind of almost, you could almost call it a spreadsheet of all the um, spreadsheet in terms of the discharges that go into our environment. That includes not only consented activities, but it should also include the contaminant discharges that are occurring as permitted activities. When you've got a permitted activity, you don't know that it's happening. Same with water takes. Um, if a water take is permitted, and if it is not required to be measured under uh, national regulations, we don't have an idea what's happening. So. It's something that we need to keep in mind uh, when we think about permitted activities. And uh, I think, you know, um, where permitted activities are not an option, um, it's about, you know, providing for a clear consenting process. Um, yeah. And I think the setting of limits um, and, um, yeah, setting of limits around water use and discharges play an important role in that regard. Thanks, Tom. Uh, just to, we've got a couple of questions in terms of consultation. So if you wouldn't mind just stepping through these consultation steps, and I'll just ask those questions as we go through. Yep. So four steps. Uh, the first step is what we're doing right now. The second step is when we come back with outcomes those narratives really, and uh, their uh, numerical expression through a target attribute states and um, linked to that management options. And so management options will be actions that we think should ha happen um, in order to achieve those outcomes. And those will be translated into rules 
I think it's at that point that you start having a conversation around um, trade-offs or the practi practicality of certain management actions within a certain environment as well. Um, once we've done that and we've gotten some feedback from the community on those options, um, we will select a preferred one and present that to the community as well. So in terms of the timing, step two, um, we're working towards uh, getting back to the community with options um, shortly after the middle of the year, so July, August, and then towards the end of uh, 2022, uh, come back with a, pref uh, a preferred management option. So Tom, just in terms of step two, Bridget South asked the question, at what point the consultation will be discussions around how the tensions between the values will be resolved? At what point are we discussing how competing values may be resolved? I think that's point two, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, Tom. Because uh, that's uh, where, where the, you know, um, where the tension between environmental um values and um yeah other uses economic uh, values or uh social values will come to the fore i think it's a very much at that point um Next time. step three uh preferred management option um that is towards um the end of um this year and then step four is notifying the uh, land and water plan that is at the end of uh, 2023 there seems to be like a big gap uh, between step three and step four but um, we've got other FMUs and Rohe um, that we need to um, come up with a management option for and also we have a few procedural steps to go through before notification as well. So a lot of 2023 will be, um, yeah, we'll be working on just getting the plan through the process of picking it through governance level, pre-notification consultation with uh, statutory parties and so on. Thanks, Tom. Um, I've just got a few questions here from Lloyd. The first is, uh, so step one, which we're currently going through now, are we just having online meetings or is there a, another opportunity to, uh, for the community to, to talk with us and provide feedback? At this point, um, there's a tension between uh, being rigorous uh, in terms of our consultation efforts and meeting our timeframes, uh, a timeframe that is, uh, you know, based on an agreement with the minister um, so at this point, it is online. Um, we had a discussion yesterday as well uh, around, you know, is that the best way? Can we do something else? Um, it's probably not for, um, we're not in a position to make any commitments around that. Um, but it is a message that has been received by uh, governance as well, by our councillors. So I think we'll be thinking about that. Um, but at this stage, it's it's online, unfortunately. Um, hopefully, the situation around COVID will have cleared up uh, by the time we get into consultation too. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Lloyd, you've got a couple of questions here that direct messages to me. I'm, I'm assuming those are meant for the broader discussion. Uh, first is, each rohe, whether each rohe would have its own targets that feed into the main document, um, and also catchment-based targets, as every catchment has its own characteristics, not least of which is the soil structure within each catchment. Is that the case now? And I guess, uh, Tom, I guess that also encompasses that discussion around the regulatory and the non-regulatory work that will be done. Yep. Um, whether we set targets at a, a rohe level uh the answer to that is uh and, and rachel can probably um elaborate on what i'm gonna say but we don't have to do that uh we can set um 
targets or limits at a catchment level or even at a sub catchment level. So, and again, that is kind of uh, based on the idea that we've we've got to, you know, provide for tailored responses. Um, yeah. Thanks, so, Simon. Also, uh, sorry. Oh no, no, go. Uh, will the city and water quality targets be discussed in a public forum, or they appear in a document? So. Once we've started drafting those water quality targets, um, how will the community get to have their say? Well, that will be through consultation too. Um, at a minimum level, it will be an online um, discussion. Um, but like I said before, if the situation improves around COVID, uh, we're very much keen to get out to the community and have a kind of a face-to-face -face or a public discussion on those. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Ollie's got a question as well. Before I ask that, I should note that uh, we are monitoring these questions, recording these questions, and they will inform uh, some frequently asked question sheets that we're going to put up on the website. So um, we will. Uh, so there are some commonalities between this question um, from you, Ollie, and what we discussed yesterday. So we will address that um, in frequently asked questions. But um, what is the plan for managing the Marao as uh, FMU as a whole, Tom? What if uh, the outcome or processes in the Rojo Valleys do not align? Yes, um, in part that risk uh, should be mitigated by, by the visioning. Um, the, the visioning kind of, or the visions bring together um, or, or they kind of emphasize the point that the Klutha Mata'au is one system. Uh, so that is um, repeated for every single rohe. Um, we've also haven't just split up the Klutha Mata Ao into rohe. Um, there is an overarching FMU structure for um, the Klutha, and I would assume or I anticipate that um, we'll see some provisions at you know at that overarching. FMU, wider Klutha FMU level. But it is a concern by many and, and yeah, we're definitely alert to it. Cool, thanks, Tom. Um, so if we move on to the next slide, and I think I'm grabbing this one. So just in terms of the opportunity to provide feedback, uh, how can you have a say in terms of this process? Firstly, uh, talking to us online via Zoom, and as I've discussed, we are going to be recording these questions and using them to inform frequently asked questions. John, you've got a couple of comments here around the fresh water values you want to see. Please encourage you to put that through the survey. Uh, that'll be really useful uh, feedback through that survey. Uh, you can complete the survey online. Uh, there is a, a link there, but also if you go to the Land and Water Regional Plan website, there is a link to the Lower Clutha um, Rohe uh, within that. Um, and also, I pre certainly appreciate that not everyone has good internet connectivity, uh, and also that people want to just fill out a, a hard copy. Um, so there are paper copies available. If you email customer services or give 0800, uh, the OIC 0800 number a, a call, we can get those out to you. And again, those um, uh, details are up on the website. Um, you can also mark areas of significance on the online waterways map. And again, that is on that web page. Uh, and we will be, uh, there are a few communications going out just providing that, um, that detail around the web page as well. Uh, next slide, please, Tom. So the online feedback for the lower um, Clutha closes on 28th March. The surveys for the other freshwater units, you may be um, interested in the other freshwater management units. Uh, those close at different times. Uh, so do please do just check uh, the website for those specific times uh, for each FMU. Um, if you need a paper copy, uh, as, as discussed, please uh, contact ORC. Um, the website will be constantly updated uh, both in terms of those frequently asked questions I discussed and also um, information as, it, as, as it's developed, particularly sort of socioeconomic information, science, 
Um, so please keep in touch uh, or keep up to date on the website itself. Uh, and also, um, if you fill out the survey, there is the option to be uh, to put your uh, contact details forward through the communications as well. If you, um, as discussed, we are very keenly intending um, to get out into the communities at um, that consultation two phase. That'll be, uh, again, mid to end of 2022. Um, very keen to, that's where we discuss the preferred outline, uh, some management options and discuss with you preferred management options. Uh, and that will be uh, address some of those questions you have around the, the competing values and, and how we actually, where the rubber hit will hit the road. And again, uh, please stay connected. Uh, I'd like to invite, we'll shortly, uh, we'll stay online. We're, um, we're gonna stay online till half past eight. So I'd, um, I'd like to invite Mana Whenua to uh, provide a karakia. After that, we will um, stay online for a little bit just to answer any questions and answers, but I really do appreciate um, your time and effort uh, jumping online and the very uh, very useful questions. Uh, would Mana Whenua please provide a karakia? Oh, kia ora. Kia ora. I'll pass you to two, Thank you. Uh, tēnā, tēnā tēnā tātou, i whakarau ka mai nei. Uh, ki te aha ki te hui, uh, te kōrero, te wānanga, uh, mō tēnei te oranga o te wai, uh, mō nānei hārea ki tonu nei. Um, so, you know, just as to uh, wrap things up for tonight, uh, <clears throat> just from mana whenua, just thanking um, all of the insights and the information that's been provided. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll begin our, our karakia to finish us off for tonight. A te urunga tū, te urunga tapu, te mauri tū, te mauri tapu, te mauri, te whiwhia, te mauri, te rawea, te mauri, no hea, te mauri, no runga, no rangi, no nuku tū. Te nei te mauri ka whakapiki, te nei te mauri ka whakaki, te mauri o ngā tipua, te mauri o ngā tua, te mauri nā rangi, whakaputa ki te whai iau, ki te o mārama, uhi, wero, hau mai te mauri, hau mie, hui e, hai. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you. Councillor Hope, I think you just wanted to close with a few comments, sorry, I got the order of that wrong. Councillor Hope. Hello. Thank you, David. I think this has been really interesting. And I think all the people, looks like we started with about 22 and now we're up to 38, 39. Uh, look, some people, I, I have to stress this, um, while this is my, my rohi as well, this is also my ward. It's probably just how, how it's um, marriage the two into one. But please, some people don't have computers. Some people have probably been with other people tonight to, to, to watch this. Uh, we also have Councillor uh, Wilson here from Middlemarch. We're actually both us ladies are from Middlemarch, but if anyone wants to talk to us as well, um, and, and you can't for some reason have that information fed back to you by the 28th, we are also here too. Um, I thank you also for the chat. Gosh, there's been some really interesting discussion. I've, I've really enjoyed watching and um, you know some of the answers perhaps we've provided might not satisfy everybody um, but so important to have your say and I thank everybody for, for coming our OIC staff um, all of those lovely people that I can see and um, I know myself and I helped uh, Councillor Wilson to do the um, FMU at Catlins and we thoroughly enjoyed the two sessions that the day and the night and we're really missing that at the moment and um this is just what we have to have but but um, we'd love the opportunity too should it arise and we hope it arises that we can come into the community it's so important um but please if you feel that you have got more you want to talk, chat to any of us about even the staff that's where we're here for i'd like to think that that's what what rc is here for too is, is we're here to listen so thank you very much. And I appreciate all of you tonight coming and um, listening and myself listening to you too. Thank you. Kia ora. Kia ora, Councillor Hope. Uh, so we are going to stick around for about 10 minutes if you want to stick around and ask any more detailed questions. Uh, David. Yes. Um, two things, maybe. Um, one, I was wondering, um, we've taken you through a bit of an exercise around, you know, uh, talking around values and characteristics and, and, and trying to 
get the thinking started around outcomes that you want to see. I was wondering if somebody um, in the audience or on the Zoom uh, would be willing to share their values um, and or the characteristics of those and what they want to see in the Rohe. Lloyd is looking at you. <laughs> I will. Sorry, I was just putting my hand up. <laughs> like you're, I oh, know. Thanks very much. I, I, at the end of the day, as you know, I'm pretty involved with the Palmer Harker and stuff, and um, and the South Otago project as well. And I just thought, I, I just thought it'd be good to share what our, you know, because we're all we're all in the same game. We're all trying to get to the same result, and we just want to try and do it together rather than coming from two separate, two individual silos. And so, anyway. The vision for the the vision for the Palmer Harker is our aim is for the Palmer Harker River to be recognised as having the absolute highest water quality, so that future generations can enjoy the river as we have. So what we're saying is we want the river to be as good as we can get it. We um, we don't know what perfect the designation of what perfect is, but we want it to be good enough so that the people that follow us have the ability to enjoy the river or and the and what the why or the water offers. In the future, and have various profitable, sustainable agriculture thriving together alongside local business, recreation, and tourism. Pristine environment um, to swish, to fish, to sorry, to swim, play, and fish in. A healthy ecosystem of fish life you know, on our other our other values to educate via encouragement rather than enforcement. So probably, and, and we're we're all actually on the same page, so we just need. Every waterway is different, but this this is our waterway, and you know to be able to, it's the main Pomahaka River is all about people being able to swim and 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 catch trout and to and to have you know, like healthy ecosystems. Um, so that for for better or worse, that's what that one is. And um, Rebecca, the South Otago one's pretty pretty similar, pretty similar, um, and. And it's all about providing for future generations. So we know we have to make improvements, but over time, and I just would like to add, it's really important that you guys actually come and talk to us. We've got lots of information on the Pomahaka because you guys test five sites on the Pomahaka, I think it is. We test 30 sites. Um, so we got information, you know, from the top of the top of the tributaries to the bottom. And, and it's quite interesting to see how you can't just take one measure of the bottom and then base your whole plans on it. You know, it's just yeah. So anyway, that's that. So that's so that's the vision. That's basically the values for me here is that my grandkids and their kids and their kids can have the benefit of what I had from the river when I was a boy. Because quite frankly, we've lost some of those benefits, and we're working in the Pomahaka. The people of Pomahaka are working very hard to get them back, and I'm very happy to report that on even on the lava data, the last time I looked, all the arrows were on the improve. So. That's like awesome. So we know we're on we're on the track. We just need to stay on our track and get support and not be insular. We want to work together if we can. Not really. Sure Lloyd. And I think that is a key message around uh, community ownership of um, the um, issues and solutions. Uh, that does bring me to another point around. Uh, so if you do have further information, there is in the online survey, there's the opportunity to provide general uh, feedback at the bottom of the survey. Um, so if you have information at that point, it might be useful just to mention what that information is and, and we can direct, uh, direct ourselves um, to that information. So really do appreciate that. So uh, Lloyd, uh, sorry, not Lloyd, um, Logan. Um, like my values, I've grown up with just farming at Waipahi and always fished in the Waipahi. The Waipahi, for most of the lower river has never been a swimming, it's never been a swimming river because there's period sections of it that are mud bottom. There's no natural gravel in the lower sections of the river. But I want to see the water quality good so that we can be can it could be swim, swimming if people want swimming it without that risk, as within the Palmer Palmer Harker and the Lower Clutha. My 
probably the challenge I see is sediment, but it, which links directly with phosphorus. But currently, the risk I see is that we end up, we will block, potentially block opportunities to deal with a problem where we're trying to deal with something that's been that was created 30, 40 years ago by the catchment board with straightening of waterways. And what I want to see is this actually work to wait how we can make sure that we can deal with the historic damage while preserving and improving the water quality to get to where we want to. Got a Logan. Uh, John Hyten. We might need sediment traps, Logan. Yeah, I'm muting. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I really want to comment on the uh, long-term vision of connection between freshwater, wetlands, and the coast, because I think this is of particular importance for the Clutha. And we're talking about the lower Clutha, and I'm talking about the very lower Clutha, which has some very valuable designated wetlands, including the Tuakatoko, which the ORC has had some community consultation about, but also the Clutha Lagoon and the Puarua Estuary, which I think are incredibly valuable um, wetlands. And I'm very sad to see some of the deterioration that is occurring quite rapidly in areas like the Clutha Lagoon, uh, where I go frequently. So uh, I'm pleased to see that that connection uh, is given high priority. And I think that that lower part of the river where the wetlands and the rivers and the sea all come together should be a very particular focus of this plan. I can see a lot of work that could be done by catchment groups in the Lower Clutha, as uh, we've been hearing about for the Pomahaka. And I'm sure there are some very strong Kaitahu values in the Lower Clutha as well. So I would make that comment about the Lower Clutha. I'd also comment that I can see a huge conflict coming between these values with regard to the Onslow scheme, because the Onslow scheme will have a massive effect on flows in the lower river, which are already highly variable, which will become more variable, which will have a huge impact on a lot of the values that we've been talking about. I think this is a massive issue for the Clutha um, catchment. Um, and electricity generation has been given pretty much a free ride in the past. So I view with some concern the fact that it is given a special priority uh, in the values that were discussed tonight. Um, and I can see that that is going to be a massive problem with pressure behind it from the government to override many of the values which we've been talking about. Another value which I'll just briefly like to comment on, which I think hasn't been given much prominence in any of these plans, and that's the wider community's interest in gathering healthy food from a healthy environment. I think this comes through very strongly in Mahika Kai, but I would just like to say that I think that um, there should be more and wider recognition of um, the value that the community in general places in gathering healthy food from a healthy environment. Thank you. Kia ora, John. Uh, and you, um, we, as part of the frequently asked questions, I think we do need to cover that um, there is a specific uh, planning treatment of uh, hydrogeneration. We, we will uh, include that in the frequently asked questions it is a good question that popped up last um, yesterday. And I do uh, do want to say also that you um, probably need to jump on the phone to a, a minister to have a chat about Lake Onslow. <laughs> Sandra. 
can hear my children coming in to say no no it's it's poor timing but I guess consultation online wouldn't be consultation if we did not put our two cents in. Um, So tonight's been framed a lot about questions and I know consultation's really hard online and I don't know if there's a better way because actually you don't just want our questions do you? You actually want as consultation people's values and statements but it's difficult to get out online sometimes. Um, it's not the friendliest environment. So I guess I have to agree Logan and Lloyd's points. Um, I'm not sure of minor values, it's late, but <laughs> thoughts, ponderings. Um, it's a whole community working together on the, the stuff. Um, I find sometimes we are working in silos and all it happens is there's a lot of finger pointing go on from one party to the other rather than all working in the same direction um so whether that be regional or district council and landholders community etc et so i've got about whole community um i'm watching the southland limit setting process unfold in southland and i could be wrong but it feels i've like they've asked the questions and they've tried to consult um, I, multiple times, especially with forum and it. I don't think they've had probably enough engagement, but um, that they've jumped from the questions like you've got on your survey, which I'm sorry, I've got here, um, to how do I feel? How has this been over the last five years in reference to water quality? Um, so it's jumped from those questions to some very large reductions. Um, so Tom had a slide up and it had about 2% that was like the next step on. Um, and it, it's just that that having time to discuss those yeah, and is really important. Um, and, I've, and to bring community on that travel or direction of travel. Um, yeah, so that all community comes along. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my ponderings. It's late. I don't think my brain's 100% at this time or not. But yeah, I, I, the online form is very difficult to consult on. And I don't know if there's rules around consultation and people have to do it online or like surely you've all got people that you'll communicate with and pick up the phone and have a yarn to that you might not have had feedback from that you know is interested or resides in these areas. Thanks, Sandra. Uh, actually, that's a question. Another question that we had um, that we should probably cover in the frequently asked questions: Why the type of feedback we were looking for? And it does have to be fairly structured feedback, and that's where providing feedback through that online survey is really important. Tom, do you just want to um, just quickly go over why we're using uh, this process and why we're asking these questions specifically? Um, yeah, it, it comes across as very, um, very structured, um, but um, the um, the NPSFM is quite specific as well as to which things we need to consult with uh, or consult on with the community. So that's why we structured it almost to direct people towards those specific questions. I acknowledge the the, um, the comments that were made about um, online is not easy. Um, in the survey as well, um, there is provision for people to uh, note down um, any other matters that they want to raise. So we don't lose sight of that either. Um, yeah, like I, I've, I've, um, I've heard the, the comment as well about, you know, having different ways of engaging uh, with catchment groups or with community groups or uh, rep representatives of them. Um, so it's, it's something that we'll, we'll work towards, but I, I, I don't want to overpromise either. Um, and, and we still have a very strict timeline and, and limited resources to um, finish the plan. So, um, yeah, we, we've got to keep a certain pace. Um, 
I want to respond to a few other things that were said, um, hopefully. Um, Lloyd and Sandra made um, the point as well about uh, people working very hard and people working together in certain catchments. Um, when we started off thinking about the plan, that was one of the first things that was said, we don't want to um, come up with uh, solutions or with responses that actually this incentivize those catchment groups or those community groups. Um, so our response to achieve those outcomes will be very much a, uh, a combination of sticks and carrots. The sticks, unfortunately, will be in the plan. The carrots, um, there is a, a whole new team in council called Freshwater Implementation Team. And um, I see Lucy, Lucy Summers. Um, she's online, she's part of that team. Um, and, and they'll be working on uh, non-regulatory responses uh, to achieve those outcomes as well. Um, that means what I mean with non-regulatory is support. Um, yeah, um, the other thing about the CLUTHA that was said, um, the CLUTHA, it's in the NPSFM. Um, it's been given a special recognition I mean, the hydro scheme. The hydro scheme has been given uh, special recognition in the NPSFM, um, almost provided like an exemption. So it is something that we need to take into account and we can't really ignore it. Um, yeah, just uh, yeah, just responding to a few things that were said um, in, in the comments from various people. Uh, also, the comment was made about uh, not setting here unrealistic targets. Um, there is a quite a bit of effort um, made by our science team as well to kind of see what is the natural state as well. You know, what would the river do under normal circumstances or under circumstances that would be there naturally? So we're not setting unrealistic targets either. Thanks, Tom. Um, and just picking up on a, a couple of points there that um, it might answer in part uh, Councillor Wilson's question. So firstly, um, that the, there's the uh, integrated catchment action planning or integrated catchment management, and that might address some of those questions over time uh, in the lower clutha around um, using which plants you use to stabilise banks. And the second point there is, and it's, it's very much related around um, uh, you don't need regulations to do this, um, and, and I'm, I'm, preaching, I'm preaching the converted here, uh, but some of this stuff is, is, is working together in partnership. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I certainly, certainly re uh, recognise that, uh, Councillor Wilson. It's not your question. You're asking on behalf of someone else. Um, should have made that clear. Uh, Kimberly, as Tom was saying, and as Ollie has said, we need to work with Upper Clutha because what happens there can have a flow-on effect uh, to what happens in the lower, um, and you should be sorry for that pun. I think that's more a statement than a, um, a, a question. But yeah, there does does need uh, underline the need for integrated management uh, across the Clutha, uh, not just dividing uh, between the different raw hair. I think we're pretty much. Uh, Lloyd, you've still got your hand up. Do you want to make yeah, a comment? Yeah, yeah, I've just got a short comment. I'd just like to endorse what John was saying earlier on around the wetlands and stuff. I think that's a very important um, value that's it's one value, it's one value that's been lost over time. And it's just we need to really promote the the retention and re and redevelopment of wetlands because in the right throughout all the catchments, because we need to do things naturally rather than build the stop banks higher. So we need to be um, putting those lungs back into the system. So that's something I think we should be proactively encouraging within the plan as a, as a high value. So I just want to double tick it if we can. Thanks, Thanks Lord. And, and you were uh, you, uh, walking, the, walking the walk and talking the talk on that one, I know. So um, Elsa's asked a question uh, around Tamano or Tuwai. Uh, Maria, would you like to grab that? Or have you got your hand up for a... Um, a question oh well i can i can add to it um i also will know what i will say <laughs> she probably wants to hear what um 
from Tom on that one. So, um, in fact, actually, Tom, I wouldn't mind if you did um, answer Elsa on that, and then I can I can follow up with supporting. Um, if that's okay, are you happy to do that, Tom? Yes. Um, although, Elsa, would you be able to elaborate a little bit? Um, which we... comments? Yeah, I will quickly. I appreciate we're at 8.40 now, so I don't want to keep... But that... that can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. sorry. I've got all these signs coming up on my screen. Um, just that kind of comment about... Um, it, it start, your conversation started off really inspiring, and, and I appreciate you've got a huge piece of work ahead of you, um, as, as we all do. But then it just kind of started to fade away there. And, and I guess it's a degree of concern, really, to finish up what had been quite a good conversation. Um, I'm just really worried that we're going to regulate the status quo and that what people think they need to move on might not be actually what's needed for the mata'o. Um, and so, and that comes all into the visioning and the values and the outcomes and the indicators and the attributes we'll be looking to use to explain it. So I, this is my um, summary of the last short period. So here is my question. Um, my assumption is the status quo, so what we've got at the moment, will not achieve the mana o in the lower mata'o. Um, is that the understanding of OSC, that significant change is needed? Um, not having any state of the environment information before me, um, and, you know, speaking in general terms, um, I believe that in, in certain places, significant change will be needed. Um, but, you know, I... Yeah, I'm not a, a um, the change will depend on the outcomes that we're setting. And that is something that we're still doing through this process. Um, and it will also depend on, you know, where we at, like our current state, which is probably something that um, Rachel is, is, is Rachel Ozan from the science team is, uh, who's here is better place to answer on. So it will depend on that gap, really. Um, I think, yeah, I, now I, I'm happy to pick that up. I think that's the level of aspiration. So I think what else is alluding to is the level of aspiration. And in fact, I think that's what I was also hearing from um, Lloyd around actually um, there is a there is a collective effort to achieve change so you're anticipating the need for change and it's just talking about the um the scale of that change in the appetite for um an aspiration that recognizes what's been lost and and what will be required to get it back so i think yeah that's probably it in a nutshell when I originally stuck my hand up, I was thinking that um, I just wanted to share a learning from Southam since it did come up earlier. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't remember which speaker, but um, uh, it was around that idea of the, the jump and the needing to bring the um, community along the journey. I think that's a, an important um, point to make the, the bringing along on the journey. Uh, what we did learn in Southland, though, was that the um, community as a whole, for at least the last decade, had been asking for particular freshwater outcomes. And when we did our most recent process of combining community, including iwi values, translating that into outcomes, so this exact process that we're trying to do here, when we did that, the degree of overlap between um, you know, community including iwi and, um, and uh, previous consultations, um, the degree of overlap and aspiration was, was 
high. It's in both cases, you the the messaging that's talking about two thirds of reduction in um, contaminants in waterways in Southland that's come across the board and has been a consistent um, actual message from the community over a couple of decades and from mana whenua for over a hundred years. So. What I want to, the my reason for saying it is that I want everyone on the call to understand that I think that there is also a high degree of overlap, uh, generally and likely to be the case um, in um, Lower Mata'o and Pumahaka. Um, now we're also speaking from here, <laughs> coming to you live from Tabanui. So um, I just have a lot of hope for this uh, Rohi and what we can achieve together, and I don't think you'll find that we're all that far apart. Yeah, I guess Maria. just to follow up quickly on my comment, Tom, just to give some context, is that um, in these conversations, I hope that they remain aspirational and forward thinking, because I hate going into community engagement and everyone's told to just, nothing much is going to change, everything's going to be the same, carry on as you are. In actual fact, what we are looking at is a systemic change and and it's not going to be um, the same, although you've got a lot of cool people on here who can think laterally and can come up with some awesome ideas for change. Um, so I think it's just encouraging that innovation within the group, opposed to saying everything's fine, nothing to see here, life will be the same. And I guess that's just what I would like to articulate with that question. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, and look, just to be clear, I think the objective is not to kind of put a stake in the ground and say, you know, we'll try to maintain the status quo. Um, I just want to emphasize that, you know, um, it's very much outcome focused and, and, and forward looking. Um, I just don't want to make any bold statements um, that means that we're losing some people who are ultimately part of this process and acknowledging that, you know, these kind of online conversations uh, pose some challenges and that the time frame within which um, we've got to have those conversations in itself is a, is a challenge as well. Um, so yeah, that's where I was coming from. Um, yeah, yeah, just just to back that up, I think uh, it's, uh, it's um, to offend Tom, who's a big boy and can defend himself, it's, uh, um, it is up to the community uh, to drive some of these discussions and the environmental outcomes we seek. And I think uh, Tom was just sort of uh, not stepping into that space and being um, subjective. He was being objective when he was discussing that. So we're, um, we're well over time. Uh, we do appreciate the discussion. Uh, what we might do, if you have any questions, um, please get in touch with Rachel. She's provided her contact details right at the top of the chat box. Um, and we'll close it off now. Um, please stay in touch uh, through the um, through the um, through the process. Um, also, please use that survey. I know it may seem a bit too structured, but but we do have those um, very specific questions, and we do have the opportunity to provide broader feedback at the bottom of the survey. And really, really do appreciate the uh, the constructive discussion we've had tonight. It's um, a pretty impressive bunch of people. So uh, thank you very much, and, um, and we'll catch you um, next time. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you for your time, everybody. All good. Thank you. We'll too, thank you. Thanks, Lloyd. Hope your mouth feels better. The painless has worn off, I can tell you. <laughs> Don't mean. It's good. <laughs> Appreciate you being here, as everybody. No, no. Good night. Tom, can you unshare the presentation, please? Unshare, yep. Okay. Um, right, I'll just um, manage the...
it's just team hold alcohol. On, hold on a minute. Hold on. I'm just. Um... Hold on a minute. Right, just give me a minute, Tom. I'm just looking at who's here. I notice we're still recording. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. We'll just. I was just needing just... to say. I was just 